Showbiz India collaborated with the Los Angeles County Department of Mental Health to raise awareness about mental health and the stigma surrounding it amongst the South Asian youth. Here's a look at the empowering discussion amongst our participants. Depression to me, a sense of hopelessness. A loss of interest, chronic sadness. I think depression is a hindrance and disability. Empty feeling when you wake up in the morning like you have like no purpose left. All these things that you've described, all which are components of depression, what would push you to get go the next step and to look for treatment? Biggest things that's helped that I constantly do is I read a lot of books. Just a lot of cognitive control, mental uh, awareness. My level of, of awareness when I'm feeling certain things I can diagnose it immediately. Getting control of like the negative self-talk and stopping that and having the tools to tell yourself like okay this isn't me this is my mind. Making that time for yourself going to seek professional help. For something that you desperately need to go to therapy it's important to realize that you need to get help before you get to that point. It's important that we're talking about this and I think that's why I think this will help for sure to people to be like realize that hey now I can make a change because other people are talking about it. Tell people that you love mainly your family and your friends and sometimes I know it's a taboo to tell your parents especially the ones back in India how you feel but I think if you're open with it and you really tell them how you feel I think they will help you. Majority of the times that parents tend to be less like receptive. There is a taboo with it and just because I think they see parents in particular don't hold it to as much as a regard as it should be. Because I feel if parents don't have to do anything, they just need to listen. And having that support system, having that encouragement, knowing that there's someone to fall back to, I think makes a whole lot of difference. There's still uh, not much awareness uh, as to what point exactly have you been depressed? That is something which a lot of people, including me, we need to figure out. What the difference is between clinical depression and when mm -hmm. sort of our normative kind of day-to-day -day ups and downs that we feel. And I think that's where we need to, as a community, come together and educate our community a bit more about what that means. What allowed you to take that next step to get help from others, which would help us as providers know um, what more we can do to help make it easier for you to access treatment from us. There's this misconception that depression is laziness, it's staying in bed, it's not having the energy to do something, something like diabetes or cancer. We don't play it down and say, oh gosh, this person's just exhausted. Oh, this person just has a virus. We go and get help for that. And so something as little as staying in bed, changes in appetite, changes in sleep over the course of two weeks, your body's saying, hey, pay attention, something's happening. Reach out when we see these changes. I got in a car accident a couple years ago and everyone was like, are you okay? I think the hard part about it was I didn't want anyone to help me. I think I went to a psychiatrist or a therapist or whatever, but the first thing they're like, do you want antidepressants? I even think just from the medical side or like the professional side, it's like, oh, here we have this cure, which is antidepressants. And around that time, I knew someone who was on antidepressants and he committed suicide. And he was like, maybe that was like my chance to help him. When you are dealing with someone with who's clinically depressed, it's gonna take a long time. And I don't think we, and a lot of us don't have the patience for that. I don't know, maybe advice on how to do that. To get people to access treatment who are a little more ambivalent, um, you know, your primary care physician is a great way to get there. And you can ask the primary care provider to screen you, to screen your family member or to screen you for depression. So as long as you mention it and you bring it up, they will, they will do it for you. I would suggest is trying to take care of yourself and being aware of it. I would say do something for yourself every single day, even if it means just standing in your balcony and having those five deep breaths. Knowing that you're taking care of yourself, you can be more available to somebody who really needs you. Speaking from like a student perspective, I'm in high school. We have college applications going on right now and that itself is such a stress and I think it's important to kind of take a step back and analyze how to help yourself. We have so many expectations with ourselves. One coping mechanism that I think is very helpful that tell yourself that I forgive myself and I've done my best that I can in my current circumstances and tomorrow's a new day and I can try again. I think a connection with God really helps. I do meditate uh, rather five to ten minutes but what really lifts me up is going all out and, and Praying. Your support system could be your family, it could be your friends. Build your group around you that can really lift you and motivate you, give you, give you that strength. Seeking out treatment isn't only just seeing a psychiatrist, it can also be seeing a therapist, it's seeing a peer advocate, which is a person who's just 
been in your shoes, they can understand it, and they're to listen and empathize. And psychiatrists are great. They help us give us a diagnosis and answer to what we may be experiencing. But know that medication is an option. It's not the only solution. And I think there's some movies in the Hindi cinema industry that do help and shed a light on this topic. Movies like Three Idiots, where there is a college student who commits suicide because of the pressure that he's under. So movies like that send a message, right, that it's not OK to have a stigma on this topic. Having hobbies, anything that takes you out of your normal clinical routine, that just throws you off a little bit and makes you feel a little bit happier. There's dance therapy, there's art therapy, there's music therapy. Maybe you can go into that and see, find an avenue that makes, that helps you. Friend complaining a lot about, he's like, ah, you know, this happened. He's actually dealing with a lot of chronic pain. But the other day I was like, you know, you should, uh, you know, just write down everything you're grateful for. He's like, ah, oh, there's nothing to be grateful for. But I was like, no, write it down. And he called me like five minutes later. He's like, hey, that really helped. And one of the things I wrote down was I'm grateful for you. But I think we can help people once we've helped ourselves when we're in that position because if we're also hurting it's really hard to help another. We're teaching our body to think more positively and see the opportunity instead of seeing the fear. When you know someone who's dealing with something really severe even the National Suicide Hotline is there. As a therapist I know what to do when someone's experiencing suicide but and I call the National Suicide Hotline for feedback. Just having them ground me and calm me down is what I really needed in that moment. So another venue that you can absolutely tap into is the LA County Mental Health. You can call them anytime, it's free of charge. Talk therapy may not necessarily have to be with a professional. Having friends, the old fashioned way of just going for a hike, you get your exercise in, but you get to talk to a friend as well. What would be helpful to the larger to the larger society, larger South Asian society in terms of how to communicate some of these ideas to them, how to share these resources with them. Facebook um, videos that are going viral right now, you can use that to kind of target a particular demographic, so in this case, the South Asian community. And maybe you can show a real conversation having um, that would appeal to people because you've got that cultural background so that people who are in the South Asian community can kind of relate to that like oh yeah I've been there or and these are the kind of the warning signs. Becoming the best version of yourself that helps tremendously because and it's just like this domino effect be a good representative of yourself you know max out your potential and don't just give in to like the lows all the time. Like showing that this is a chemical problem and really like depicting that in a video or whatever form, telling them that it's like going to the doctor, you go to a doctor for a checkup every year, it's the same thing for your brain, it's a medical problem, then I think it removes the stigma for them. Like a, on a global scale, we could do like a, you know what I mean, some type of Big. seminar yeah. or something where people come together and learn tools of communication or air out like things that, symptoms that people might have. You tell them that today I failed and this is something that I'm upset with, tomorrow they'll tell you and you'll build a bond that's not fake and false. Just trying to be there for them, just trying to slowly encourage them to do, take little steps. If you ask them to go for dinner or out with you, that might be a huge step for a person who is wallowing. So if you can just give them that chance, you really don't have to talk. Just letting them know that you are there, but just telling them, hey, you know, I'm a phone call away is not going to do it. What you really need to do is take a proactive step. When someone tells you they're feeling low, they're feeling depressed, things aren't okay, let them know that it's okay to feel that way. Asking the question of what would make you feel better today? is so empowering because it gets a person thinking, what is going to get me out of here in this moment? It can be really hard to sort of know how to help them. And so there are a lot of resources available through, you know, online, like there's um, treatment that you can even do, what you can to help, but also know that there's a lot of other people out there that can help you sort of bridge that gap. Just through this session today, I have learned so much. I have realized that like so many things just feel so um, like empowered, like, okay, you know, I know something. I know I can say this, or I can do this, or I can refer this. You know, I learned so much today, so thank you. If you or someone you care about needs help, call the Los Angeles County Department of Mental Health 24-7 helpline at 1-800-854-7771. Your call is safe and confidential.